Hello, fuckos, and welcome to this episode 42 of the Chris Hunter Company Podcast with me, Chris Hunter. Hello, how are you doing? Are you well? Have you had a nice week? I have. Um, with me today, we have a special guest, folks. Hello, it's the Charlie <laughs> Podcast. Wow, <laughs> should have hijacked my fucking sentence. It's Charlie, you might have guessed. Say hello, Charlie. Don't actually say hello, Charlie, I will hit you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, she's sat there with a brew, she's not well, so she's going to be a bit sniffly today. But we just got back from the cinema and it's a bit late, so I thought rather than whizzing through it on my own and then, you know, editing it and shit and putting it up online, I thought, you know what, the old cow can come on with me. What happened was I was like, I'm going to go and get in bed because it's late and I'm tired and I'm ill. And I promise I won't listen to you because he doesn't like being listened to recording. And he was like, now if you're going to be upstairs, you're going to be on it. Yep, that's so. the rules. You're near with the podcast, you're on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like the theme tune, sing the theme tune, you know, the whole thing. The cat um, usually just ignores you. The, the cat the sits cat. in here and then refuses to talk. No, that is true. That is true. So, yes, how are you all doing, folks? We have uh, had a busy week. Well, I've had a busy week. I've been doing the Art Station Challenge that I was talking about last week. Uh, I finished it, which was surprising. It wasn't as good as I wanted it to be, but it was finished. I was happy enough with that. Uh, did you see the end result? I can't remember. Uh, I saw it at multiple stages, and I'm pretty sure I saw it at the end. But I went to bed before you finished, so I think... That's true. But it was rendering. Yeah, yeah. It, that, the, the actual scene was finished yeah. at that point. So, yeah, I, I would give it a solid 6 out of 10. Um, <laughs> I need it to be a 9 before I'm happy. <laughs> right. He was like, look, this is what I've been doing all day. And he showed me two pictures. And I was like, oh, no, yeah, that, that does look a lot better. Well done. And he went, that's the before picture. <laughs> I said, that's the before. I spent two hours <laughs> fixing that shit. <laughs> but you'll be happy to know. I spent the next day putting it back. So, <laughs> thanks for the feedback. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that was kind of awkward. But, but that you know that happens. It's the joy of art. Sometimes things don't go quite the way you plan it to, and you, you realise you know you've been looking at it for too long. You need to step away, go outside yourself. And how much further outside yourself can you get than someone else's judgmental bitchy eyes? And that's what I did. I you joke. shouldn't have shown me the before picture. No, after, should you? it's good. It's good. I'm glad you did that. It really helped. It genuinely helped. Well, it was um, one of the things of you should have stopped a brush stroke ago. Yeah. You took two hours to do the brush stroke. Yeah, and I went, oh shit, where's my rubber? <laughs> and then realised it doesn't work on paint, so I was stuck. Um, we have done, it's almost Christmas, as you know. We have done. I have heard. We have done next to no Christmas shopping. That's because you've been working constantly. Exactly. So I've been Pokemon in. Yeah, exactly. Charlie's been playing Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Eevee. And I've been playing Let's Work Hard Upstairs. Which is a fun game, but it's taxing. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's been it's been nice. Yesterday it was the first day I wasn't working, so I we watched. You, you went well, so we we had a curry. We watched Wreck It Ralph on the projector. One, not two. One, which yeah. was amazing. We're getting ready for Wreck It Ralph. Too. We're getting ready for Wreck It Ralph. Ralph, Ralph wrecks the internet. Yeah, we we'll watch that this weekend. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Um, and we also after that you said right, you're playing Red Dead, and I yes. said yes, I am. <laughs> so I played Red Dead Redemption for two hours. Kind of nice person. You are that kind. Of, I was gloating about you today in work. About how nice you are with that kind of thing, because normally people in work are bitching about how their wives or girlfriends are like, you when you you spend time with me, when you miss still playing games, what are you a child? And uh, whereas you're like, go and play a game, Chico. <laughs> go away <laughs> I from me. I bought this game and you don't play it enough. Yes, exactly. So yeah, it was nice of you to do that. So I, I get proper that. value out of my games. You really do. You I, I it. buy Shit a game <laughs> and then I will live on that game. Like I may have bought Skyrim three times. But I'm seriously... S- I'm saying it's probably more than three by now. No, I've only bought it three times. Um, PS3. PS4. PS4. VR. VR. Do you have Switch yet? No, I don't have Switch. Um, okay, Alexa. Oh, that, that, that doesn't count. I didn't pay for that. You got it, though. Um, but it's like, <laughs> even after having paid for it three times, I'm probably still only paying about a penny a minute for my entertainment because that is how much I've played for Shark. Yeah, exactly. It. And I, I really... I finished it. No, and I'm really glad you've got stuff for that because it, it generally helps. Because I feel guilty, even if you've said it's fine, I'll feel guilty if I'm up here working and you're down there doing whatever you're doing. Because I'm like, oh, I'm ignoring you, it's not nice. But then when you've got a game like this, you generally don't notice I'm gone, I think. Yeah, <laughs> and then it's like, you, your game, your average game price per entertainment, mm-hmm. I think is about £20 an hour, right? <laughs> because you because buy I'm... a game at full retail, brand new whack. Yeah. And then you play it for an hour or two, and then you're like, but I've got work to do. And then, but then when I, you I play... finally stop working, you're yeah. like, but, but this game's out, and <laughs> yeah. I need it. <laughs> but I do always go back to the game. It's just usually four or five years later. Yeah, when I could have picked it up for like a five. Exactly. See, that's, there's no fun in that, though, is there? <laughs> there's no excitement of getting that nice right. new game. Pokemon Let's Go came out a week and a half ago. Yeah. I have played over 26 hours <laughs> of it while holding down a full-time job. And going out and living a life as well. That is true. That's almost like you've swapped a child for a game. 
and I really like that. And I, I totally sleep prefer a lot. that way. Yeah, you do. Boy, it's do not you. like I'm quite Boy, out of sleep. Yeah, she's not at all. Um, but yeah, we just got back from the cinema, speaking of going out. Uh, we watched the Cineworld secret screening for unlimited members. Shh, it's a secret. secret. Don't tell nobody. But I'll, I'll tell you folks. You just keep it a secret. But yeah, it's if, like no one listens. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> hey, Jack, tell her you listen. Um, and Lucy. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I can name two of my <laughs> listeners. Maybe all of them. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, anyway, if you... If you uh, have a Cineworld Unlimited card. Yes. Like a monthly subscription card. You get to go to secret screenings every now and again. This was the 10th this year. That's was like it? almost wow. one a month. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, so the un- the secret screening is a film that's not out yet. It's going to be out in the next two or three weeks. What? The film we watched yeah. is not out till February 2019. Wow, that's impressive. That's three months ahead. Well, two months. We're yes. in December. We're just beginning of December. That's the 4th of December. <laughs> yeah, We've well, three months. it might be out on the 1st of February. Well, you know what? Know. You know what? You might be wrong. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, the, it was called Green Book. Yeah, it won, uh, but it won People's Choice. Right. Uh, I think Sundance maybe the Toronto Film. Fest. Oh yeah. Somebody's yeah. going to correct me. Awesome. But it was some kind of film festival. That's a big deal in America. It was People's Choice. Canada. Canada. <laughs> Toronto is in Canada. Sorry, Mexicans. Um, <laughs> I'm just mixing in a different group of people. <laughs> it did come out in America on the 16th of November. Um, by the way, before recent. you say what the film is, do you think the film is a Christmas film? No. But it is set at Christmas. So is Die Hard, which has been declared not a Christmas film by... Uh, First. Not, not Tom Cruise. What's the guy's name? Brad, Brad Willis? Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brad Willis. <laughs> you know, that old that old chestnut Brad Willis. You know, married that Angelina Aniston. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's his name? Bruce Willis. I mean, I think you're going to be dividing people here. Probably. Um, it is a fun pastime. Because it's also like, what do we watch every Christmas? And don't say Elf, we know that's a Christmas film. What is one of our Christmas traditions of a film that we watch? Nightmare Before Christmas. No. We have watched that a few times before yeah, Christmas. Yeah, I know, but we we do have a tradition. We've done it for like five years. <laughs> you put me in the spot Considering here. this is only our sixth Christmas <laughs> at the house, that means pretty much every year... Oh, Frozen. Frozen. Yeah, of course. Well, it's not a Christmas film, it's a July film. <laughs> it's just in the snow. It's in the snow. Christmas isn't normally in the snow in England. Um, the film doesn't even reference Christmas, it just came out at Christmas. Yeah, they mentioned snowmen. But this film is a film set at Christmas, which in England is going to be coming out in February. Yeah. I guess it is. What, so, yeah, it's a, it's a winter film. A winter We can settle that, it's a winter film. But it was a good film. Christmas film. So yeah, it was called uh, The Green Book. Green I Book. Think. Or was it just Green Book? just green book okay but either way it was a really good film it was a we th- when it started we had no idea what it was um we thought it was going to be a gangster film because nobody starts... walked out and i think that's be- well it was a good film people it was shouldn't a good walk film, out yeah. but every single time a film gets announced at the secret screening you always get some people that walk yeah but because it was two months early and it's not been advertised yet i think everyone had the same reaction as us as what the hell like what is this let's stick around and it just got better and better it and was generally it, a good film it was dreamworks yeah. Which was really confusing, because when have DreamWorks done something like that? Yeah, exactly. It was live action, so it wasn't an animation or anything. But maybe, to be fair, they, it was E1 Entertainment, so maybe DreamWorks just helped out with post-production or something, you know? Sometimes that happens, cross cross uh, studio know. collaborations. Um, but yeah, it was good. It was about a guy who, um, he works at the Copacabana, Copacabana, who has a bit of issues and have to get renovations done for a couple of months. Tony Lip. Tony Lip. Um, yeah, it's it's based on a true story, apparently, which I didn't realise. Mm-hmm. I know it said at the beginning, I remember now. Yep. But, yeah, it's it was nice to see pictures of the real people at the end. I don't like true story films for one reason and one reason only. You do not know what's going to happen. When you watch a film, yeah. you have an idea of what's going to happen. Because it's Hollywood. It's a narrative structure. Right, they, they try and make everything nice for you at the end. Me and my dad watched a film, I can't remember what it was called, but it was about firefighters. Right. <laughs> And we didn't know it was a true story because it only said at the end, based on a true story. Dedicated to the life of right? the main character. So we went into this film and all the fire was enclosing around them and you're like, how are we going to get out of this yeah, one? Yeah, because they must do, surely. It's a film. They didn't get out of it. Jesus. Right? And it's no spoilers. Even a spoiler you, you don't have the name of the film. Because I didn't even tell you the name of the film. Right? But they didn't get out of it and it literally goes back to their families and one guy survived Jesus and Christ. everybody breaks out crying when he walks in the room because not they didn't want him to survive but they knew there was only one survivor and everyone yeah. was hoping for their boyfriend husband yeah exactly whoever. yeah that's horrific right and then the film ends and it's <laughs> like um based on the true events of and it showed a picture of the fire brigade but all died and like 40 of them died Jeez. right and 
I mean, I turned around to my dad, and my dad had picked up film, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing to me, man? <laughs> and he Do you like, hate me? <laughs> I didn't realise it was a true story either. Yeah. And me and my dad are just looking at each other going, yeah, don't cry. <laughs> we, we weren't ready for that. Yeah, who we is? Were, we were watching this film, like, oh, it's a good film. And yeah. like, how are we going to get out of this now, Hollywood? That's like what happened with me when I first watched Up. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a nice happy film. Look at them getting all together. Oh, oh no, no. Stop the film. Stop the film. <laughs> I want to get off. I want to get off the film. Um, it's making me feel stuff. So that's why I don't like true story films. Yeah. Because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. I said the same to you with this film. Like, It's it's a really good film. I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but it's I didn't explain what it was. It's about a guy who, it, the, he works at the Copacabana. It gets close for refurbishment, so he has to find work for a couple of weeks. He gets a call saying, look, there might be some work for you. You've got to basically show for this guy around the south. Well, you've got to show for this guy around. So he goes to the uh, he goes to the interview with this guy called the doctor or something, uh, and he says, "What? If you just really watched that whole film and you don't know what the guy's name is, yeah, it's it's called Doctor something. <laughs> I, f- I forget. Okay, Doctor Dom Shirley. Doctor Dom Shirley. So yeah, it turns out Doctor Dom is a musician. Uh, he's a black musician, and this is set in the late sixties, by the way, mid sixties. Sixty two. Sixty two. Early sixties. That's <laughs> close. <laughs> It's set, in the, it's set in the last century. I know they said this century then. It's set in the 60s. And so things were a bit tense, to say the least. Things were okay in New York, where the film is originally set. Things down <laughs> south. <laughs> things down south. I said okay. He's alive. He's happy-ish. <laughs> He's got a house. But then things down south, where he wants to do a musical tour as a black performing artist, where they're not even like people from the north, let alone black guys. Um, so that was a brave move, I thought. Um, but basically the film was about the guy... Uh, chauffeuring him around, dealing with what happens and what doesn't happen, and he's like a music. gangster guy. So the guy's like a gangster. So he's a really good sort of, not necessarily a he's bodyguard. A racist gangster as well. A little, it, it, it originally, starts off yeah, it with starts the off. Film. It, start, it starts off basically showing, yeah, this guy's a racist, subtly kind of. Not really subtly. What well, yeah, happens? But, I mean, he's not. He's not, a he's not loud racist. At he's the, just like, this is my house. At the very beginning of the film, two guys come to replace his floor. Yeah, and then his wife gives him a drink, and when they finish drinking. She puts the cups in the sink for her to do the washing up, and yeah. he picks up the cups and throws them in the trash. Yeah, because it was black guys changing the floor. We should yeah. mention that. Yeah. Um, um, so, so yeah, he's, it, they, views... they don't subtly hint at it. But like no, this... but I mean, he didn't smash the glass over the guy's face, which would have happened in the South. <laughs> what I'm saying is, things are getting better in New York. They're not great. They're still not great, but they were getting better. Um, so yeah, it's it's really it was a really good story. I really enjoyed the film. It's about the relationship between these two developing and growing throughout the film. Uh, and yeah, it was good. There was a couple of times in it I was thinking, "Oh, I hope things don't go like real south right now." Um, but then I could. Well, they were already as south as they could get, baby. That's true. They were in was it Kentucky? Uh, they travelled around. <laughs> KFC. They got KFC. Um, um, spoiler alert. Yeah, who'd have thunk in Kentucky? KFC featured in the film. But Do you funny. think they paid for that? Uh, I don't know. Or maybe they had to be paid for that. No, they wouldn't have got paid for that. I don't know. Because it was a good advert. They were like, God damn, KFC is good. Yeah, that's but true. But I think they could have paid for this. That is true. Um, but it's funny, the whole time I was watching it thinking, you know what, I'm going to tell Bill Burr about this film. <laughs> Not that he would listen, but he would love that film from what he talks about in his podcast and stuff. It's Because he loves gangster films and the kind of roles... He was talking today in one I was listening to about the kind of roles that he plays in films. He's not good at acting, except he's good at this one thing and this one thing people want sometimes. So I thought... Tony, the character, that's his one thing. <laughs> so, you know, maybe he lost the audition. You never know. Uh, but yeah, so I enjoyed that film. Uh, I would highly recommend The Green Book. When, uh, sorry, Green Book. When it comes out. Uh, and yeah, that was good. So, yeah, we, uh, we've, as you've heard, Charlie's not been very well recently. No. She's feeling sad about it. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to get back on track, being healthy, eating again. Well, I I was totally going to do exactly. that. Exactly. That's what I mean. But because you're, you're not well, you're not right now. And that's then, completely fine. Kaz... At work, how's it work? Made me ill. Look at her naming and shaming. Yeah, naming and shaming. <laughs> right? I was like, last week, just go home. You're ill. Like, really ill. Go home. I don't want you near me. And she's like, I can't. I'm new. She is new. She's like six weeks in. Um, and she's like, I can't. You can't do that when you're new. And I'm like, you are going to make me ill and I am not going to be happy. <laughs> right? And you know what? She has taken out the whole of the department. The department is three people me, her, and one other guy. Right? And now. We're all like the germ factory. Oh, God, I love right? that. People open the door and don't cross so the threshold. They're hazmat suits. I, we've <laughs> actually Breaking got a little sign which we made today. Um, <laughs> and it has got an ill emoji. And then it's got a little... It's got an orange line across it because I don't have a red one. Um, <laughs> no ill people. And it says, 
Warning, plague, don't dead open inside. <laughs> <laughs> nice choice. Which then I had to Google, because who doesn't Google everything they think of? Yeah. Um, and I was like, I just want to see what the... I mean, obviously I know the origin of don't dead open inside is um, walking dead. dead. Yeah. But like, somebody surely thought about that when they were doing it. Um, and I think it is actually originally from the comic. But there was um, a whole thread on some sci-fi forum of... Right. And um, people discussing who wrote the Don't Dead Open Inside and people like being, look. Why? Um, why? <laughs> um, so a lot of people were red? saying, no, a lot of people were saying it was Merle. Um, but obviously it happens off oh, camera. In, in game, yeah. in, in show. But like, in yeah. game, Merle does it. Um, oh. And anyway, some guy had commented, his only comment, I checked, his only comment on yeah. this website full stop. And he said, actually, I did it. And here's the pictures. And he had pictures from pre-show right. um, where he had painted it, right? And then he was like, but depending on who you ask, it's either Johnny or Ronnie painted it. He said, because I painted it. And then we're discussing that whoever would have done this in the world mm. probably didn't go and look for paintbrushes. Yeah. Um, so we said Ronnie, who must have been one of the other guys, got a spray can and then sprayed over what he said ah. because it had then looked more authentic. Yeah, Somebody course, described yeah. a spray so the final it. touch was done by somebody else and he was like so if you ever want to know who wrote that it was me oh, that's or cool. <laughs> I like that kind of thing it's, isn't the internet amazing how you can just find that out like that's something you would never ever learn in a million years in any other show like back in the day but like now it's just ridiculous but yeah so he said we knew, we had no idea it was going to be such a big thing it was like so there was his little once he painted it, and then there was a picture of once it had been done yeah. by the other guy on set, and he's like, "Yeah, that, that was me." Well, can you imagine your claim to claim to fame being a minor fuck up? We have a don't dead opening yeah. set. And it's a good meme. Like when that. I googled that, there is a Reddit page, Reddit page, page. Reddit page dedicated just memes and stuff, which is Reddit um, D D. O S, right. which stands don't for dead open "Don't Dead Open Inside." inside. Oh, sorry, D D O I. Don't Dead Open Side. And yeah, it's I just found that quite funny. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I like I like some kind of weird tangent you can head off to in the uh, on the old internet. I Google now. everything. You do. That's how you learn. Um, but yeah, so like I was saying, Charlie's not well, so she's not currently back to the health eating thing right now. Because you know, when you're not well, you just need whatever food Cake. makes you feel better. Uh, whereas I have been good today. I've been trying my damn bestest. Um, so recently, I'm gonna try. I'm trying to cut out unnecessary sugar like things things like fruit and fruit juice and whatnot it's fine but things like putting sugar in my tea or having chocolate or stuff you know i'm not allowed and i'm also trying to stick to some kind of like veggie vegany meals so what you're saying you're still gonna have everything you like but just a shit version of it yeah so (laughs) well it's like compromise where no one's happy yeah Right, you like. I want a cup of tea. I will have it without sugar. To be fair, I have it without sugar most of the you time. Anyway, you went to Costa the other day. Yeah, and when I was clearing the here. table, <laughs> yeah, somebody had had a coffee with five sugars in it. Jesus, why? You... Even I'm looking at that like, what the hell? Yeah, because I mean, Costa don't even do big coffees. It's not like you know, in Starbucks. Maybe you can understand it because they give you like buckets of crap. That um, Starbucks is crap. Yeah, no, well, it's, it's not. It's not awful, but it's not great. Um, no, no, I'm all about the Costa. If somebody wants to throw a sponsorship at me, it better not be Starbucks, but it better be Costa. <laughs> I love you, Costa. I'm going to tell you something later. Um, but yeah, off off air, it's kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so I'm trying to cut Have out... you got a sponsorship deal? Is it Starbucks? No, we don't. Ah. No, it isn't. Shush. <laughs> off air, woman. No, yeah, so I'm trying to cut out refined sugars and stuff like that. And I'm trying to stick to like a veggie or vegan meals throughout the week, like Monday to Sunday. Uh, no, Sunday to Friday, whatever. The days that don't include Saturday. Um, <laughs> because you know, like Sunday when I'm in work. Friday. Thank you, Sunday to Friday. Yeah, because that way it's it's not it's not that I care about being vegan or anything like that. It's just that if I have to think about what I'm about to eat, it gives me that few seconds to think, actually I don't need this or I don't need that version of it. Like normally if I'm getting like a you know a butty or something, I'll see oh a nice roast chicken salad. Then I'll see a big old fat all day breakfast next to him, like, oh I do like sausage. And then my brain goes, Buy the sausage. Whilst now I'm like, How about neither? Get the falafel. That's better for you. I was walking through the office today Mm -hmm. and one of my colleagues had a polystyrene cup of sausages. (laughs) She had been to the van. We've got a sandwich van outside. This is an unnamed aforementioned colleague. You know her. I have not mentioned her. She is not, she's not crazy Kaz. Oh, okay. That sounds like a crazy Kaz thing to do. (laughs) Um, A cup of sausage. I like this one. She was like, yeah, I just fancy sausage. So she'd well, gone out to the sandwich van and she'd just been like, sausages, please. And then she just... It's a little bit well, like when we used to work at the... You know, the 
Yeah, yeah, sandwich van. Yeah, that's just, amazing. So it's proper. Sa- I thought you meant like you had like cocktail sausages. No, no, like from Asda. Actually, not, just oh my god, I love this sausages. person. Um, was, the, like, was the ketchup at the bottom of the cup? I don't know. I didn't look. That is um, that needs to happen. We need to start a snack van. <laughs> we need to sell just sausages in polystyrene cups. Ketchup in the bottom. You buy it. There's two, two per cup. Three if you're fatty. But let's face it, two. It's comfy. And then you, you it's it's pre dunked. I mean, come on now. Um, it writes itself. How about the whole no Japanese bread. thing of the um, the little push? Why hasn't that come into England yet? I don't know what you just said. Um, the ketchup and mustard. Oh yeah. Which, when you squish it against each other, creates the lines. Yeah, it's like right, guys. It's like a sachet, Magic. isn't it? If you imagine a sachet of sauce, like the ketchup. No, it's not like sachet. More no, like, it's like the, the ketchup pots. pots where you get, pots you get with the lids on them. Yeah. yeah. But instead of just being a pot that you peel the lid off, instead, if you imagine two pots side by side, uh, and, and they've got like slightly perforated holes at the top. And what you do is you bend it and sort of push the two bulbous bottom bits together. Like a muller corner. Kind of, yeah. And then you squish them together and it pops out the top in nice lines of perfect a perfect balance of ketchup and, and mayo or mustard or um, whatever it is that's in there. It's perfect. Like cheese and chocolate on your chocolate. McDonald's fries. Yeah, sometimes they do that. It's... Oh no, is it cheese and chocolate or is it white chocolate and dark chocolate? Uh, I don't know, but either way, <laughs> either way, it's a good mix of flavours. Um, but yeah, so I, I've been been trying to cut stuff out, and I, I can't gain one more pound. Mm, I've decided. Chocolate I, fries. I know chocolate fries are amazing. <laughs> Don't. I'm trying to be good, woman. I'm talking about this. I'm trying to be good. Yeah, I can't gain one more pound. If I, I've I've shot up again in, in weight since we went on holiday, I've ploughed it back on. I've I've put on about I don't know, ten pound. Oh my god. Yeah. Exactly. So if I gain one more pound, I'm going to cross a threshold I never wanted to go back to. <laughs> so I cannot gain one more pound. So on Saturday, I'm going to find out what's going on with that. And then I'm going to go for a burger. Because it's Saturday and fuck you all. What if you gained your pound? Then I'll be sad. I need two burgers. <laughs> um, two speaking burgers. of burgers, what was the burger this week? Um, it was it was KFC, but Oh, nicer. the Big Easy. Oh, that was so nice. It was called the Big Easy. It was their version. It was what I have at KFC. Yeah, except it was, for a bit kind crazy. of. It was their version of the the Dirty Louisiana, which is a double stack buttermilk chicken breast, which is they do the best chicken ever. We do do um, nice chicken. <laughs> you said do do. Um, <laughs> and they they <coughs> sorry, let me use myself there. Uh, they had hash brown on it, uh, some sauce. I want a hash brown on every burger. Yeah, how ever. good I is mean, that? I do that when I go to KFC, and I don't even like hash browns. I love hash browns. Oh, you don't <coughs> make spit. Oh, well, they didn't make Pardon? spit. Um, <laughs> we went to when they have them little fudge stalls at Christmas. Selling. Spitting fudge, you're getting worse by the second. <laughs> you know, they sell fudge at Christmas on yeah. little stalls, and it's hand- oh yes, yeah, in Warrington. And we're like, can I have some <coughs> Bailey's fudge, please? Yeah. Um, and then Bailey's fudge in a cup. Yeah. And then he wants some mint fudge. <laughs> and then she was like getting us for stuff, and I was just like. I bet you think I like Bailey's, don't you? But I really don't. Yeah, she was in mid-sip at the time. They nearly did a spit take over the customers. Um, and I think it was just because I just randomly said it. And she just... She, she's like, why are you buying Bailey's? <laughs> yeah, she just couldn't understand it at all. Uh, but yeah, so it was an amazing burger. Really, really good, as always. And the cake this week as well, the waffle. <gasps> oh, it was a waffle and it had gingerbread cake on the waffle. I don't even like ginger cake. I that was love awesome. ginger cake, so it was perfect for me. I was on a waffle, which is amazing as always. I had vanilla ice cream with it, which is perfect. It was it a didn't perfect. Have vanilla ice cream. It was bad Bailey's ice cream is what I meant. The <laughs> Bailey's ice cream. I said that way too, way too fast. The Bailey's ice cream was the perfect accompaniment to ginger. Who'd have thought? I wouldn't have put them two together, but it I worked really well. Really? Yeah. Ah, I thought Bailey's would be a bit acidic for ginger. No, but... Bailey's is smooth. Smooth. Smooth baby. Uh, yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed that. And yeah, tonight as well, we finished uh, American Horror Story. Yeah. Uh, what's this season called? It was Apocalypse. Covenant. Apocalypse. That was it, Apocalypse. It was really good. What uh, did it follow on from? Oh, Jesus Christ. There's so many timelines in this freaking thing. Don't uh, say it like you've watched them all. I watched like four. <laughs> watched three of them back to back and then this one. So oh, and then I have. <laughs> you, you're going to be starting Asylum soon. Okay. Asylum's really good. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I, Coven, I don't know. Um, it, it doesn't matter which one it falls on from the house. Murderhouse? Murderhouse. Murderhouse. Roadhouse. Uh, yeah, so that was really good. American Horror Story. That guy who played Quicksilver is fast, quickly becoming one of my favourite actors. He directed a lot of this series Did he? as well. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, he's, he's doing really well for himself. <clears throat> he's, uh, yeah, he's a good guy. I like him. I liked him in Kick-Ass, and that's the first thing I saw him in. Not Kick-Ass. Yeah, Kick-Ass. Uh, it was a great film. His girlfriend is Julia Roberts' niece and played Madison in American Horror Story. Wasn't Madison? Oh, yeah. I know her. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um... Right, we have to do the Barzi Could advert now. And by that, I mean my Charlie is going to read it blind. As in, like, uh, she, hasn't, she hasn't read it before. 
She's going to read it now, so enjoy the ramblings of Charles <coughs> for a second. So, read away. Ahem. <coughs> Bazookoid advert. Bazookoid advert. Maybe not that loud into the mic. Maybe not that loud into the mic. Do you like video games, board games, or card games? Do you like geek culture and want to hang out with other people who share that same passion? Well, if you live near St. Helens or the surrounding areas, you're in luck. Bazookoid is a brand new geek and gaming lounge located in St. Helens Town Centre on Clawton Street. They have everything that your little geeky heart could ever desire. Games, food, drinks, events, you name it, they've probably got it. So head down to Bazooka and have yourself some fun out of the sun. There we go, that wasn't too bad. I mean, I covered two words for you to not read, and then you just read them out anyway when I moved my finger. But that's okay. <laughs> it, it is not brand new. It isn't either. It is Back just, away from the mic, is it? It is just a ge- <laughs> geek and gaming located. So. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yes, Bowser Crate. So, guys, go there. It's a fantastic place. They're doing really well. They've got loads of gaming nights on now. And they keep adding new events. And I want to go back soon. Uh, now that I'm not so busy, we should try and get back at some point soon. It's awesome. We're always so busy. We are so busy. But we love Scuffy. If he's listening, we love you, buddy. Keep it up. Keep up the good work. Um, yeah, so, as you may have noticed, we have a guest. There's Charlie, this one. Say hello, Charlie, again. I just shrugged the face. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I want to get more guests on to tell funny stories and whatnot. Or if you guys have got any funny stories, I want you to let me know so we can read them out. Or... And I'll pretend they were my funny stories and read them out for you. Sure, that might work. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so yeah, send them to me. Or, or if you know anybody who has funny stories, you think about want to come on the podcast, if they're local, they can do. Uh, I want to try and get some guests, is what I'm saying. Uh, maybe some local comics. Maybe some friends who've got funny stories. Hey, hey. What? If you go down to Barzukoid Gaming Lounge, you will find geeky people with funny stories and they can share them with you. I like this idea. Thank you. Um, <laughs> that was a free idea. Uh, yeah, so I like the idea of having some guests on in the future. Uh, you just need to start taking your mic around and make it a podcast on the road. I would do, but I need, I need a, a better... I need an actual standalone audio oh, device. Please, please do not... This. This mic's the perfect. The recording mics that you made me buy before this, we went to this holiday mic is perfect. and then haven't used. Look at... We didn't, oh no, the mics are great. I remember now. Okay, cool. She's right, you know. But yeah, I'm an audio recorder, but that's fine. Um, yeah. So, if you guys have any funny stories you want to tell me, anything at all, or you know anybody who is funny, let me know. And remember, you can always find me on my social media stuff. Uh, I'm at Chris into Comedy. Uh, no, I'm Chris into Comedy on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. I'm at Chris Hunter Com, which is short for comedy, on Twitter, uh, because you can't fit comedy on the full name because they're the tools. This week's Japanese word of the week, I haven't thought of yet. So do you have one you want to give out there? What's your what's a good word for them? Fukuno. I already did it. Damn it you. Damn your face in. Okay. That reminded me of one. Damn it. Shut up. Okay. Damn it. Shut up. It's nice. <laughs> it's final. It's like, hey, do you want do you wanna do you wanna give me some stick? Damn it. No. Uh so yeah, there you go. Japanese word of the week. And recommendations this week I recommend uh let me see. What? Oh, I, there was something I saw the other day I recommended. American oh. Horror Story. Okay, yeah, I recommend American Horror Story Apocalypse. Give it a watch. It's all. Uh, it's it's been and gone. So it's been and gone. Is it on anything? Is it on any on demand services? I or? don't know. Do Fox have an on demand? Yeah. Um, they're if doing they American. don't, then you could just watch. If you haven't watched American Horror Story, don't go for Apocalypse. Actually, if you've never watched American Horror Story, yeah, that's a good point. It will be confusing um, because it's tying together like four different series. Yeah, all the series are actually standalones except for this one. Um, so you can pick any series from one to seven. Uh, I would personally recommend you start with one, not because we're starting at the beginning, but because it's one of my favourites. Was one house? Um, so one was Murder House. If you wanted to watch Apocalypse, watch Murder House, which is season one, Coven, which is season three, and then by then hopefully Apocalypse will be on some kind of streaming service for you, and that is season eight. Cool. Yeah, I like the sounds of that. Uh, so yeah, I think that's us for today. So remember, folks, if you do me a massive favour. Uh, spread the word about the podcast to people. I want people to hear this far and wide. Um, if you want to hear more of Charlie in the future, let me know, and we can have her on more often, maybe. I don't know, see if she's good. I don't think you're going to afford me. I can't afford you. I, I knew this long ago. I'm sapping money. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, but yeah, so also, if you like what you hear, do me a favour. Just rate and uh, rate uh, the podcast on whatever you use to listen to it, whether it's iTunes or Podcast Addict or whatever it is. Uh, and any kind of shares or subscriptions will really, really help me a lot. So, thanks a lot for listening, folks, and I will see all you lovely people next week. Bye-bye now. Bye.